You might sometimes say, there's a release coming. Why did they do that? Have you ever asked yourself that about WordPress? Why? Why? Getting a head nod from a core committer. Why? Yes. So that's my friend James. This was at Taken During WordCamp Europe, but I love the, the quote behind him is why, and I'll make sure that he sees this later. Think about the phrase, why did they do that? It could be read with intonation in a few different ways. Why did they do that? 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 Different meanings, right? So think about how that applies. It's the WP Minute. Support independent WordPress news like this. Go to the wpminute.com slash support. Buy us a digital coffee. Join the membership like the voice you just heard, Courtney Robertson, for $79 a year. It's the best way to support the show. And it gets you into our Slack group to chat with other folks who are really dedicated to the WordPress news. We share links. We help shape the links that go out in the newsletter every week. Go to the wpminute.com slash support. Okay, why did I play that clip from Courtney? Number one, it's a fantastic resource. It's a fantastic video that she just did at WordCamp Montclair talking about how to get involved with the WordPress community. And uh, most importantly, I think her message of when we say, why did they do that? Or we want to be maybe frustrated with the way that WordPress is moving. We often point fingers as if it's some other folks who are out there in the world creating WordPress because, yes, in fact, it is other people uh, that are creating WordPress and contributing to it. But the idea is that you, too, can contribute to WordPress, the software, in many different ways. Even if you're not a developer, you're not a coder, WordPress is open source and it is the most democratic way that I've seen software being built. In other words, you can see 98% of the things happening out in public and comment and contribute to and have an opinion on and share and get others to sort of rally around maybe a particular cause in WordPress, or at least that's the idea of it. And I wanted to bring that up today because <clears throat> I feel like we're in this interesting moment in WordPress somebody who evaluates the news. And of course, you, the listener listening to this, are always tuned in to what's happening because of folks like us here at the WP Minute. That There's a lot of things happening with WordPress right now, but we're just not feeling the sum of it. There, there's so many things happening, and you might be in two different camps. You might be thinking, wow, there's so much things happening with WordPress. It's exciting. It's amazing. Or you're in the other camp, like, where's all this excitement? Where's all these cool new features? Why can't I have a federated network of my WordPress website that goes out to social media sites and I'm selling things natively in WordPress. You might be on that other camp like, hey, there's not a lot of things happening. But as I've evaluated this last week uh, or week or two, because I was out sick last week, so I didn't get a, an episode out. But what I was doing was I was putting together a new WordPress website for the WP Minute or I was refreshing the theme because I had uh, built a custom theme and I was sort of locked into the way that it was built. If I needed to extend it, I needed to know code and, and how it was built. And <clears throat> I have very little limited time committed to the WP Minute alongside my day job at Gravity Forms. And I needed to get some control back. You might notice the homepage is different. You can see more content. You can see <laughs> more headlines. And I'm going to start to customize the archive pages. And that was the number one thing for me is an idea of a site that started really small, started to have a lot of content now. I need better ways to show off that content. But that's not what the discussion about is about. The discussion is about I wanted to use a full site editing theme, and I, and I couldn't. I really struggled with it. I really struggled with dynamic themes uh, or dynamic templates and customizing the archive pages with what full site editing themes were giving me. And Cadence ended up being this sort of happy medium Originally, I was going to redo everything in, in Beaver Builder, but I was still faced with the challenge of, I have to recreate the theme. Cadence simply had a theme that got me 90% of the way there, which newsflash, what most customers want is a theme that gets them 90% of the way there, and then they'll customize that last 10%. I fell perfectly into that, that customer profile. Give me something quick and, and fast and efficient, and then give me the tools around it in a familiar way. And the familiar way with Cadence was I still use the customizer. And if I want to create custom archive pages and modify the loop and change the templates and all that stuff, I use, I think, what they call elements inside of 
the admin dashboard. So I'm not doing it in full site editing, but then I'm creating the pages with how my mind works is with patterns and blocks. So I can control the big stuff, layout, colors, typography in the customizer. Then I can go into this other place called elements to create the archive templates that I want. And then when I go into those individual pages, I use patterns and, and, and Gutenberg to fill in the, to fill in the rest. And it, and it works great. The challenge that I see uh, and the reason why I play Courtney Robertson's clip is to not point fingers, but to understand that if you are challenged with this stuff to voice your opinion, because there are big things happening. We're in phase three of this collaboration process for WordPress, and that encompasses a lot. And this is what I'm, what I feel is there's this undercurrent that you just, you really can't see it happening, but one day we're going to open up WordPress and quite literally the admin screen <laughs> is going to look different. And I play the clip again of Courtney because I don't want you to open it up and say, why did they do that? When you have the opportunity to have your voice heard, we're still feeling the ripple effects of the command palette. Do I feel like the command palette was the right word? No. Is it the end of the world for me? No. But that is a perfect example of getting your, your voice heard and it, or to at least follow along so that you, to be informed with those changes. And, it, and it's challenging because it, things are happening fast and you might not, not, might not be doing it every single day. Number one, it's why you stay connected to the WP Minute because hopefully we're surfacing the, those conversa conversations and those big changes. But to give yourself that opportunity to stay connected. I've seen some really smart people, smarter than me, who have been doing this stuff forever, have the challenges with this. Carrie Dills just tweeted about it, and I'll get that link in the show notes, about how she felt like, hey, man, we used to have this separation of development and design, and now everything sort of just blended in. You have uh, settings and, and customizations that are in Gutenberg blocks that used to be just in the style sheet. And now there's, there's no way to separate that. And I agree, right? Those are, those are the trade-offs. We make it much easier for somebody like me to, to design and, and build a site. I don't have to open up an editor. I don't have to connect to a server. I don't have to have a deployment workflow. My God, I can just make the changes. But now those, whatever, like these padding changes I made in, in, in Cadence are saved in a Cadence block somewhere in the abyss of a database. <laughs> so if I ever change my theme, if I wanted to change my theme for uh, a d design reason that's obviously not cadence, I'm going to have to recreate all those blocks again or that layout again. And I guess that's what comes with the territory of a theme. Is that the trade-off? I don't know. Maybe in a world where it was just a style sheet and a template PHP file, things were different. Uh, I saw Carolina Nymark and, and Rich Tabor sort of just have a, a little friendly back and forth about the, the way that the full site editor menu tray was updated and now template parts are now in patterns, but one would debate, is that really a pattern or is that a template part? So there's all of these things changing. And I, and I can just tell you, like, if some of my friends and colleagues who have been doing this and are much smarter than me are struggling and I'm struggling, then the end user is definitely struggling. And it's up to us as, as uh, WordPress advocates, as agency owners, as freelancers, as developers, as product makers, is to, number one, give back to the cause by contributing, by at least commenting and, and getting your voice heard, but then keeping our customers and our, and our friends and colleagues who use WordPress informed as best as possible. Because I can tell you that, man, when that ad, like literally you're going to log into WordPress and, ad, and the admin's going to look different. And what I don't want is for you to say, why did they do that? I want you to hopefully get involved and keep awareness going for these changes. WordPress.org doesn't act like a product company because it's not, though I do think that it's smart of them to start thinking in that fashion because how else do you get user feedback, get what I'll call customer feedback, work that into a product cycle and then you know, iterate, design, redevelop, but then also communicate these changes. The admin change is going to be pretty drastic. And I'm curious to see how WordPress.org makes the, or communicates this to end users because they're not a typical product company. So they leave that to the web hosts and the agencies and the WordPress podcasts of the world to communicate that. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> communicate it through me. I'm happy, happy to get the, get the word out for you. And maybe naturally that's how it changes. 
you know, this WordPress media landscape is uh, is going to be more valuable the more that these changes happen. So maybe that's a good thing. It's job security. But that's a big departure, the admin redesign, than for what you've been using for, for years. Now, I know Rich Tabor and Ann McCarthy are going to do like a WordPress 6.3 product demo, which is cool. It's great to see that. I've always advocated for that. Start to show off the product, get people excited about the product, just like any other product company would do. But, but the idea is, just like Courtney said, don't ask why they did that when we all have the opportunity to contribute. All right, that's it for today's episode. Let me know what you think. Tweet at me, email me, Matt at the WP Minute. You can support us. You can support our work at the WPMinute.com slash support. You buy us a digital coffee. Join that membership for $79 a year. Join the Slack group so we can chat about WordPress news every single week. Uh, let me know what you think about the new site. It's not really changed dramatically. In fact, one could argue it's pretty basic now. <laughs> I lose some of those, like the 2% of design elements that I had with a custom site. Maybe I'll work those in in the future, but Cadence has been pretty easy to use and comprehend. And again, it gives me that power back uh, that I need to create custom landing pages, to create content pages, etc., etc. Okay, if you love the show, go ahead and share it on social media, the WPMinute.com. Join the newsletter at the WPMinute.com slash subscribe.